We've got something a little bit different for you this week before we kick off season two. So a lot of what we want to be doing while we travel around the world is take every opportunity to help the people that we meet along the way. We left our corporate jobs, so we don't have a lot of money that we can donate to causes, but we're trying to be as generous as we can with what we do have, which is time. You might have heard recently on the news that a volcano erupted on St. Vincent. In fact, it didn't just erupt once, but it exploded 30 times in nine days. We got a call from a charity called What's on Water, which is a project run by What's of Love. They distribute solar lights all around the world to people who are living without power. And What's on Water are trying to do this by sailboat. So straight away, we were jumping on the chance to be involved. So Brooks from What's on Water gave us a call and he said, I need to get to St. Vincent. I need to see what's happening there and I need a media team to come and film the situation on the ground. Are you up for it? So unfortunately, we can't both go. There is a ton of work here that we need to do. So we've decided that Ian is gonna stay behind and get started on the boat jobs, and I'm gonna head south to St. Vincent with Brooks. Why are we waiting here? So we're waiting for Brooks. Um, we've tried to give him directions from the airport. Okay, here's the second bus going by that I don't think he's on. Nope. So I'm not sure how long to wait until we phone him again and go and find him. <laughs> we found him. So that's the first job ticked off. Now we're just gonna go find some food, sort out all of the details that we need to before we can get going. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of work out a plan for next week, see what um, connections we have, see what networks we can set up, what relationships we can start building. And yeah, I'm just super excited to get going, really. We are gonna come and have a look at these actual solar lights that we're gonna get delivered. With. So this is the smallest, and I think the sturdiest of the lights that we have. So it comes with a couple things. It comes with a lanyard, which is nice because you can use this as a, a head lamp. Here, you just hold it down. That's the lowest one. And then that's the medium. And there's the bright. Oh, that's so easy. And it's so uh, compact. Yeah. We have a hundred on the way, but then I was able to get, I think we should have about 24. Have you brought any other luggage with you? <laughs> or just lights? <laughs> well, basically I, I have two sets of clothes. <laughs> Here's your Watts oh, of Love you. hat. Here's your, <laughs> in case we have another <laughs> incident. Proper PPE. Yeah. yeah, so if there's another explosion of the uh, volcano yeah, and there's ash tighten, everywhere. Tighten that one up really or if you want to take part in some kind of squash tournament. Oh, I was thinking like downhill skiing. We are all packed up, we're ready to go. We have had a delay with the lights. We were ordered in a box of 100 solar lights. They were supposed to get here last week. They have been delayed and delayed and delayed. But anyway, we are going to head off to the airport now. And then we have a massive manic day of flights to get to St. Vincent. Right, we're heading off. We're going from St. Martin to Antigua to Dominica to Barbados to St. Vincent. We made it. So we're heading to our quarantine hotel now. We're not entirely sure how long we need to quarantine for. We're hoping to get a humanitarian exemption. Uh, but we're going to have to wait a couple of days to find out and then hopefully we can get on with it. This could be our home for just a couple of days. If everything goes really badly, I might be stuck here all week till I have to fly back again. Fingers crossed, right? So for a hotel quarantine, I really can't complain. Look, I have this massive room all to myself. I have my own bathroom. And check this out. Usually one of the biggest drawbacks about being in quarantine is the isolation. It gets super boring, it gets really lonely. But here, all I have to do is come outside and I've got Brooks right next door. Okay, so Brooks, what is going on? Why are we here? So we are in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because there was a major volcanic eruption and dumped a massive amount of ash onto the island. Yeah, it's had a huge effect on like thousands of people. So what is it that we're trying to do this week? Our goal with Watts on Water and Red Seas is to bring the first 120 lights to give to people who have lost their electric and who are now living without light at night. Yeah, so the bigger picture is not to just fly in for five days at a time. What is it that you want to achieve in the long term? We want to give people 
a tool for not only surviving what's happening now, but a tool to survive what is surely going to come in the coming months and years. Uh, having the ability to produce your own light in the midst of a disaster is, is an incredible skill. And uh, giving, giving people this uh, solar powered light, which can last up to 10 years if it's taken care of, and people usually take care of it, allows people to stop the downward spiral that all of these disasters cause when they pile up. So it's, it's really important just to give people uh, a tool to be able to see at night, to move around, to not have to burn uh, kerosene and uh, alternative fuels that just are not safe. Now, if you add on the fact that simple things like going to the bathroom at night without light, it's, it's demoralizing, you know, and, and simply having light is it's beyond safety and security, which is, you know, our primary purpose is about giving people dignity and uh, allowing them to, to have some semblance of normalcy in the midst of this chaos. We're heading out today. A guy called Basil is going to come and pick us up this morning. He lives in the red zone, so he's going to drive us back up north to see where he lives and to see what just what the situation is like up there. Hopefully we will meet some people that we can help and if I can get shots to show uh, what life is like, what people are living through, then hopefully we can spread the news a little bit because it just hasn't made headlines. So we're just gearing up and then we'll hit the road. Okay, time to go. I spoke to a few people who had witnessed 79 and um, what they said to me was that it was not as bad as now. What happened when uh, that first day? You know, you hear this rolling song up in the mountain, like a jet engine. A few minutes after, we heard like, this loud explosion. So then when I look up in the air, I saw all the huge vast cloud of ash going up in the air. So I said to my boys, we can't stay, let's go, let's go now. And let's start to move people. There's like hundreds of people by the road, on and right, looking for right to go, get out. So I started jogging people with the truck, make chips back and forward with the truck. And then after that, you have like eruption after this again, ash in the air again. driven up the Windward Coast and uh, crossed into the red zone past a police checkpoint and instantly you can see the difference in, in the buildings and the damage that the, the ash and the lahars have caused. People are, are out working, they're clearing up the ash, but it, it is so different to what we've seen in the south. As we've driven further and further north, we've stopped a few times and uh, Basil has showed us where the roads have actually been completely blocked as these lahars and rivers have broken their banks ash has just piled up over the roads um, and drivers coming up just a few days after the volcano erupted had to clear their way to be able to get through. When we were up here the first time after the eruption, yeah. we couldn't pass here. We had to make shift road where we had to go to the back of those houses, come around in the river, um, come across here on the bank and um, go up oh, wow. between those houses. Amazing what water can do. Eh? The road has gone from just being a regular smooth tarmac road now to the buildup of ash making it really bumpy. We're quite struck by the sudden changes as we're not having to go that far north. And now we're getting into the territory where, where people are still living without power. There are about 4,000 people still living in shelters down south, but there's maybe around 100 people who have lived up here for this whole month and don't have power. So that's who we're trying to find today. We're now in a small village called Magum in the far north of St. Vincent on the windward side. And we're seeing not only houses destroyed, roofs collapsed, crops gone, but we're hearing some amazing stories of people who have lived through this as well. We met a guy called Kendall who has no power, no light. He's living with a torch, but he says that he has to wait for people to travel south to charge it for him and bring it back up north to him again. So it was really great to be able to give him a light. Yeah, kind of scary. You have to be brief. You have to be brave. If you're not strong, you wouldn't make it. <laughs> if Friday night is not, it was a huge night, me telling you. Grumbling, heavy rolling, we never, you know, like we never experienced before. Earlier in the day, 
we were talking to a really animated uh, man. He wanted to show us what he was using as light. And it was a kerosene lamp. The kerosene is the, is the light that burns people, starts fires. So to be able to take that out of the equation and put in a solar powered light was, you know, that's the mission of Watts of Love is to give people sustainable light that is going to make their life better, not worse. I'm, I'm encouraged. We got exactly to the spot we needed to be. I'm gonna try and find a bit of flat ground with no uh, trees overhanging and get the drone up. Uh, I haven't actually flown the drone for probably over a year because I refuse to fly it from the boat. That's always Ian's job to pilot and I'm in charge of catching it, but he's not here, so I need to give it a go. At least it can't fall into the sea. So apologies if the next shots are really wobbly and jerky and if they suddenly descend very quickly in a crash, but I will do my best. We've just come through Sandy Bay. It's become the, the iconic village that a lot of the media has focused on. And, and now having been there, I can see why. We met a couple of people at the side of the road that were collecting rock and clearing the roads. We stopped to chat for them for a while, found out that they'd been living there the whole time, gave them some lights. And then more people turned up and we gave them lights. And then more people turned up and we ran out of the lights that we have. We found an extra light in the car and we didn't want to choose who got that light. It's a really, really impossible decision. So we asked Basil, we said, right, you know these people, who, who should we give it to? And instead he just pointed at the villagers and we turned around and all of them were pointing at this one guy. He said, no, no, I couldn't possibly take it, give it to somebody else. And everyone said, no man, you need it. I, I just don't have any words. It is overwhelming. I have never experienced something like this. And while it was really difficult to pull myself away from the people I'd met here in SVG, our trip had come to its end. The people of Sandy Bay are no exception. Everyone we met during our time here in St. Vincent had shown a courage and generosity unlike any I had seen before. And that is probably what made leaving so hard. Knowing that we had handed out all the lights we could while leaving so many families still in need. So even though I had my own long journey ahead of me, the people of St. Vincent are just at the beginning of their journey back to recovery. on board. Next week we will give you a tour of the boat and you can see where we're living now. Until then, if you want to donate to What's On Water, I'll put a link in the description below. Who's that, Bangkok? Hey Wilson, can you hand me that spanner? Wilson? Wilson? <laughs>